So today I'm gonna to talk to you about using data and machine learning for an application uh, that maybe you haven't uh, thought of before, which is improving our understanding of the economy. To that end, I wanna talk about a one slide introduction to uh, macroeconomics, in particular two pieces of vocabulary. The first is something called the price index. This is a time series that's computed, and it simply measures the average price for a product or a category of product over time. A slight twist on that, something, on that is something called the hedonic price index, which is the same idea, but accounts for the variation in quality of that product over time. So if you're paying twice as much for the product, but it's twice as good, well, you're not really getting, you're not really paying twice as much because you're getting twice as much in return. These time series are really useful for telling us the relative cost of goods over time, even in the face of product turnover. In other words, they help us answer a really important question, which is if we see the price of something on the shelf changing, is it getting more expensive simply because it's more, more expensive, meaning it's actually hurting us in terms of wealth, or is it because the product is changing its quality? Think about this. Let's imagine that last year you went to the store and you bought one of the more boring products on the shelf, a simple men's white cotton shirt. It costs you 100 bucks. And this year, you go to the same store, same shelf, and you can find the same thing for $90. All other things being equal, if you're the kind of person who buys a white shirt every year, you're, you now have $10 in your pocket that you didn't have before. That's terrific. What happens if instead it's $110? Well, okay, the opposite is true. Now you're $10 poorer than you used to be. But now consider a situation that's maybe more typical, which is, okay, it's $5 cheaper, but also the quality has changed. Have you become richer or poorer when this happened? It's $5 cheaper, but for a lot of people, the quality is worse. Now, this might seem like an impossible question, how much exactly is it worth the fact that the fabric of the shirt changed, but we have to answer it in order to have any kind of hope of actually measuring you know, the cost of goods over time. And that's because prices of goods and their quality are changing over time. The flux in goods on the shelf is absolutely amazing. The half-life of a barcoded good is about 50, the one-year half-life is about 50%. In other words, next year, go to the shelf and half those goods will have disappeared and been replaced by something new. And so if we want any kind of valuable hedonic price index, some way to measure our ability to consume things over time, we want to first have something that reflects actually accurate quality adjustments, something that reflects how much people prefer one change versus another, also to be high frequency, and also to, ref to reflect really fine-grained product categories. So we don't wanna just talk about clothing. We'd like to talk about white shirts, for example. Now, this problem has been known in economics for a long time, Collecting the prices is pretty straightforward, but adjusting for quality is incredibly time consuming and labor intensive. Uh, the federal government does it uh, for a lot of goods, in, in particular for goods where the product quality change over time is easy to quantify. Memory chips are a good example, but they don't do it for a lot of things. Maybe we can use machine learning for this process instead. Here's how it works. So this is work that I did with a, a number of collaborators, Gabe Ulrich. Tian Gao, Matthew Shapiro, John Haltwanger, and Laura Zhao. The critical idea here is as follows. We're gonna take a lot of data sets from supermarket checkout scanners, and we're gonna use machine learning to adjust for quality automatically for every individual product we see. That well-behaved, quality-adjusted product or price series will then use to create the price index. Now, how do we actually do that, and where does the machine learning coming in? Well, we have a huge number of these scanner transactions, and they come from supermarkets, groceries, liquor stores, et cetera. We have data on weekly time scale for their prices, where it was purchased, and crucially, a small text string that describes what was purchased. As long as there is some kind of change in the product's quality that's reflected in that string, we hope to be able to pick up on it. And so what we're going to build is a machine learning model that takes as input a description of the product and predicts what it ought to cost. Now, people's views on what things should cost changes over time, so we'll rebuild that model 
for basically every qu quarter in the year in our time set. This, doesn't, this takes a lot of data by economic standards, not so much data by computational standards. It's pretty manageable. And here's how we're going to use it. So again, the scenario is one in which there are a series of products on the shelves that we can observe, but there's a lot of flux in them. So last year, we had that white shirt for $100. This year, we have the same shirt. It's cheaper, but it's also changing its quality. We can now wonder and answer the question, what would this product have cost last year had it been on the shelf? We've captured the state of mind of people buying things through a very large data set back in 2022. And our model says, if that product had been on the shelf, it would have cost $97. That lets us ask kind of two different kinds of questions about whether goods are getting more or less expensive over time. If we did a naive comparison with just the predecessor to that product, we would say, hey, we're $5 richer. But it actually got a little bit worse. So instead, we can more accurately say that we're only $2 richer. OK, this is a, a new change in our understanding of how the economy is working, thanks to our ability to do this kind of very large scale, but still principled adjustment for quality. Here's where it actually makes a big difference. So what you're seeing here is an index computed just for food. So this is food products that you buy in grocery stores. This stretches between 2006 on the left-hand side to the end of 2015 on the right. And there are two time series here. The blue line is unadjusted prices. The government official data set does not adjust these uh, for quality. The red one is our set of quality adjusted prices. It's not a big difference, but it's really meaningful. So what you can see here is about a quarter of a percent a year is actually accounted for in improved food quality. So it's true that food overall has become more expensive over this period of time. However, you're getting somewhat more for your money as well. What that means over the span of a decade, it adds up to a few percentage points. This is really a meaningful difference in our understanding of how even a very boring kind of product category like food still reflects actual you know, ability to deliver changes that consumers want and really changes our understanding of the economy. It's just one taste, I think, of how you can use these computational data and machine learning methods to really improve our understanding of the economy overall. Thanks very much.